So is it an illness or is it a condition or neither one of those? Uh, it's a brain type. Uh, I don't really think of it as a, a, an illness. Clearly at this point in time we understand it to be a brain that has a significant downside called poor working memory and that poor working memory is compared to a low RAM computer. And that poor working memory comes from poor dopamine function or suboptimal dopamine function. And dopamine is? And dopamine is a chemical that transfers data between two nerve cells. So it acts as a bridge between two nerve cells. You could call it poor working memory syndrome. You could call it a lot of things. The distractibility disorder might even be actually the best name for ADD. And now we know a little bit more about it. This criteria that was developed for the diagnosis of ADD over the last 40 years, if you fit those criteria, you have got a dopamine dysfunction. In other words, you have suboptimal dopamine functioning. The criteria for ADD has always been impulsive, impatient, forgetful, distractible, uh, hyperactive can be uh, part of the behavior, uh, fidgety, uh, uh, losing things, sometimes overstructured, sometimes almost uh, can't handle much data, get overwhelmed easily, low frustration tolerance, temper tantrums, uh, and uh, short temper. Um, so it, all of those criteria relate pretty much, there's only one thing about those criteria that doesn't relate to low working memory, mm -hmm. and that's the ability to do risky things without feeling too much of a, a fear, essentially, or illness, or aversive, uh, you know, Wait, in well, other words, can actually go down certain roads with respect to um, threat uh, that mm -hmm. maybe somebody else who doesn't have a dopamine problem could not do because they would start to feel sick doing that. This uh, dopamine, suboptimal dopamine problem, uh, so to speak, is widespread and it varies from mild to severe based on how many of your dopamine genes are problematic. So there's 10 different dopamine genes. Oh. And when you've got 10 different genes controlling a system of bridges, so to speak, those bridges can be affected in so many different ways. Mm. And so you can have one kind of ADD, uh, you might have a dopamine gene problem that's your transporter or your D1 receptor, and I might have a dopamine gene problem that's a D2 receptor, totally different gene, still we both have ADD because yeah. it has degraded the dopamine function enough to cross the line to where we have poor working memory. So sometimes people, even with high IQs, have uh, difficulty holding a thought for more than a, 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 a second or two. So poor working yeah. memory, working memory is the same thing as RAM and a computer, it, literally the same thing. And working memory in our brains depends upon dopamine. In a computer, RAM depends upon electricity. You turn off the electricity, RAM goes away. If you were writing something to your hard drive when you did that, it wouldn't get written. Mm. So essentially what happens in the ADD brain is that poor working memory doesn't allow people to hold a thought long enough to literally make a decision about it, mm. do something with it. So it. It's just streaming data. One of the, the big questions that people have is about attention deficit disorder is the difference between children and adults. I mean, people my age, I think, a lot of them think that it's just a, a children's uh, disease, illness, condition, fill right. in the blank, right. uh, but it's not. Well, um, so uh, it started out historically with children, and the children were the focus because that's just kind of what people were noticing. And as time has gone on, it's pretty clear that people generally do not grow out of things like forgetfulness and difficulty remembering the beginning of a sentence when they get to the end of a sentence. So reading doesn't necessarily get any better. Certain things can get better. 
so to speak, people can grow out of hyperactivity. They get more sensitive about people's opinions, so they'll quit fidgeting as much, they'll control it, they'll find workarounds. But, um, but it's, since this is primarily related to genetic problems in the dopamine system, it doesn't go away unless you discover some gene therapy. So it can manifests in different ways as you grow older, depending on what challenges you bump into. So sometimes people in college can bump into the wall, so to speak. Suddenly they can't read as well, uh, as and, and they're noticing they can't read as well, whereas in high school it wasn't so much reading as it was other kinds of activities. That challenge can put them into a, a place where they start to recognize it. They've got some limits that maybe they shouldn't have. Might even be getting in the way of them literally using their IQ as well as they could if they had better working memory. In fact, better working memory guarantees academic success mm -hmm. better than IQ. So it, that study's been done several times. You can have a high IQ, poor working memory, you won't do as well as somebody with an average IQ and better working memory. Mm -hmm. So working memory is really important and, and, and there's a lot of working memory problems. Uh, so the question is, is there a lot of ADD? Yes, there is. Is it problematic? Only if you're getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you take a look at all of the different things that dopamine problems cause, sleep disorders, um, smoking, tobacco, alcohol, all, all of these things are dopamine enhancers, so to speak. It's a large number of people that have dopamine problems. The question is, how do you go about fixing that? Well, yeah. if, it's, if you're getting in trouble as an individual, you don't have too many options besides using something to increase your dopamine. So you, can't, you could get on a treadmill, but then you can't drive on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, there are things that increase dopamine, but they're not efficient or very useful. You can use tobacco to treat your ADD, but it's short acting and it has lots of side effects in the long run, right? Some people learn how to do that. They'll take their afternoon break and suddenly they can crunch numbers better. The thing that is, uh, that ADD folks do better than non-ADD people uh, is things like jumping out of airplanes, uh, competitive sports. Anything that has a threat element connected to it, an ADD person will literally get better in that situation, not worse. Because there's a part of the brain called the threat monitor center. The threat monitor area of the brain literally senses, uh, monitors all data coming in. All of the data coming in from all of our senses goes through one of those threat monitor circuits for the purpose of keeping us alive, so to speak. Threat monitoring is very important. The person who has the best threat monitoring system will survive. Huh. So uh, this is fascinating to me because um, I played basketball for, for years. I played in college and at the end of a game you knew uh, which teammate that you wanted to get the ball to because that your that teammate that player was likely to put the ball in, in the zone the yeah yeah they were in the zone and 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 that's almost how people who sort of figure this out will describe it is when they're in that situation where the threat is high the pressure's on uh, emergency situations for instance for sure they're suddenly calm focused and they can get the job done better than somebody in my tribe, the non ADD tribe, who end up being shaky, nervous, uh, like the lawyer in uh, Jurassic Park that got eaten by the dinosaur. He yeah, froze. And we all, and we he all froze. Love that too. <laughs> That's my tribe. Oh. We well, freeze. It, it's really interesting that you say that be, because, I mean, that's what you talk about in athletics is slowing the game down. That's what Russell Wilson talks about, you know, the Seattle Seahawks quarterback. And here we are in Seattle, and, and actually we're recording this a week before the Super Bowl. And as we do that, we, we look at the plays like what Richard Sherman made at the end of the NFC Championship game, where all of a sudden he was able to reach his hand up and oh, knock yeah. the ball away. Yeah. I mean, 
not we're not saying that Richard Sherman has ADD. But well, you know, that's the whole. Is that problem. a bad thing if he does? Here, here's the thing about the ADD diagnosis, right? So mm -hmm. it's currently considered to be a disorder. Yeah. When you name something uh, in such a way to only emphasize its downside, its disorder side, without looking at its upside, then you sort of set people up to not want to have it. Yeah. If there's no advantage to having it, why would you want to have it? And, and if you're going to be said to have a disorder or an illness, nobody wants that. The point is, there's so much of an upside to the ADD brain. Uh, they make the best first responders. They make the best combat. They make, you know, don't send people like me to uh, war because we'll come back with PTSD. The ADD or won't. Um, literally better in threat situations, get threat literally treats ADD. In other words, the working memory goes up because the dopamine levels go up. So it sounds like what you're, you're saying is that we can actually predict who's going to react oh, yeah. through dopamine levels. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. I, I think so. I think the literature is very clear on it. Uh, and if you look at all of the uh, uh, information about uh, people who do perform and mm -hmm. don't sort of uh, clutch in, in situations, it's, it's people who fit the criteria for ADD. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say they have ADD uh, only because it's currently called a disorder. And what I'm trying to do actually is help people understand that it's not just a downside to the ADD brain. So if I a go huge in and upside. Yeah, so if I go in and say, hey doc, how about testing my, my uh, dopamine levels, uh, you know, and he looks at me and says, what? Is that what he's going to do? I mean, are there doctors out there who really understand this, like you do? A few. Um, so, uh, not a lot. Unfortunately, this particular information, since 2008, the literature, hundreds of studies since 2008, thousands at this point, we know so much about dopamine. We don't know much about serotonin and some of the other neurotransmitters like we do about dopamine, but it's, it's relatively new. The problem is, that we are essentially setting up our culture to, in a sense, challenge the ADD brain way beyond its capacity for multitasking and paying attention. So we have a distractibility quotient in our society at this point based on all of the different kinds of technology, consumerism, you name it activities uh, oriented, we're a very activity oriented nation. Sure. And so mindfulness isn't really taught, it's being slow, what? We don't want to do that. But mm -hmm. essentially we're challenging a, a, a large portion of our population with too much data. Poor working memory and average IQ and below average IQ, those people can get in a lot of trouble because there's no way to sort of appraise their thoughts before they act on it. They can't hold the thought long enough and there's no rational safety net like IQ. So if you're getting in trouble, yeah, you, you want to try and fix that. But if you're not getting in trouble, you might only need to use ADD meds, so to speak, to fix your working memory for the, the tasks that you're not doing so well at. And then when you go skydiving, don't do it medicated. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. So you don't well, have to take yeah. meds <laughs> all day, every day. It's not something that's going to fix nerve cells. It's going to add a missing component for the period of time when you need that good working memory. Mm -hmm. If you don't need, and, and like I say, you don't want really good dopamine levels if you're if you're used to doing downhill skiing without meds. And with that, we've got to go. There's a lot more information yet to come. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see if we can get Dr. Sterling back. So uh, thank you very much for being with us. Take care.